Part 3 Component Setup and Storage. Alright, so part 3 storage. Now, because there's a lot of intricacy uh, and a very specific way to set this up, and there's a lot of components to make it easier on our members, we have a storage laminated reference card that's kept in the bottom of the bag. Remember, uh, in the near future, we'll also be having the uh, low air uh, and transfill calculation card, okay, so all the surrounding departments uh, in the county, what SBA they have, what pressures they have, and our options for dealing with a lower out of air emergency. So there'll be another laminated card in the bottom. Remember on all of our packs, we also keep a crescent wrench. So this gives us the option for not only residential, but commercial gas shutoffs. We keep the crescent wrench on the bottom of the bag. Basically what we've been doing is keeping it on the cylinder valve side, okay, on the bottom of the bag. So it's kind of consistent on where it's located. So as far as storage, first things first. Always ensure the pressure of the rid cylinder is no less than 4,500 PSI before storing the pack. On the rescue air tube, you got the Velcro straps. You want to make sure that they're as tight as possible around the circumference of the cylinder. You want them nice and snug, and we want them, can you see this okay, on a close-up on it? So first stage regulator, it's actually connected to the first stage regulator, and that second strap right here, the snap, is right on that low pressure hose, right by the extend air manifold. Okay? We want that extend air manifold up in the air like so. Okay? So that gives us the full length of the strap. The best way to actually determine that is the handle should be nice and straight and kind of taut. We're going to take the cylinder, we're going to come to the belt. Now if you notice this, the belt can loosen up. Can you get a close up on that, Troy? So a little trick of the trade for us to make sure that this doesn't loosen up and we don't bleed air out is we're going to tighten down the cylinder belt with the belt offset just a little bit. So you saw how easy I can move the belt right now. I tighten it down as, as much as I can hand tight and I'm going to take the belt and as a unit I'm going to crank it down together. Now you can see it's a lot more snug, a lot more secure. So we want to finish that step so we don't accidentally open that up. Make sure the cylinder valve is closed and bleed off any air. Remember, you can still have air in that high pressure line. So we'd have to bleed off that high pressure line too. Okay, both of them. So the recommendation is to connect up both together and bleed out the whole high pressure line if you're using it for training or an actual deployment. Okay, I'm gonna take the bottle, set it inside, and Troy, if you can't see any, just let me know. Take the crescent wrench again, the chrome side, because it's the black interior, have this on the same side as that cylinder valve, so we have it in the same location for consistency. You're gonna make sure that the face piece, the bypass valve is closed, and that the regulator is fully seated. The harness is folded over the lens, and none of the adjustment straps are twisted. Then, with the regulator on the right side or closest to me on that same side as the cylinder valve, we're going to take it and we're going to put it on the flap side of the bag. Now, here's our extend air hose. So you're going to make two round turns. Okay? And I'm actually looking at this upside down. I'm going to make a round turn once, twice. And then on that second snap, I'm going to secure it. So one thing that you'll see from a consistency standpoint is all the lines are facing the cylinder valve. Okay? Now, here's basically close to our three foot quick fill transfer line that's pre-attached to the first stage regulator. I'm going to run this and I'm going to go to second snap. And this is the one by the handle. I clip that in place. We have been keeping the uh, dust cover in position just in the event that we might need it, but we just kind of tuck it out of the way. Now this leaves this connection and this port available to put in the 25 foot. So the best way for us to connect the 25 foot is to have one of your partners run the line completely all the way out. So here's the male end, 
basically simulating the same fitting that's on your SUBA, we pre-connect it up. Now, can you get a quick top side to do this too? We're going to take the line and we keep this 25 footer on the outside perimeter of the bag. Remember our first method for addressing a lower out of air emergency is going to be this 25 foot quick or this, this quick fill transfill line. If we didn't need to go to a remote location, we didn't need to feed this line uh, through a restricted opening down a, a hole in the floor, a hole in a wall, through security bars, our method is to disconnect and then just use this. So if somebody's in close proximity for a transfill, we use this line. But worst case scenario is they're in a remote location, we go out to 25 foot. We're connected up to the, new, the original one. We want to go to the full length of the bag. So try to go all the way from end to end. Try to get our full length. And we're working from the inside to the out. No special way of coiling it. We just stuff it back and forth. Making bites each time. Again, if you go the full length of the bag, we're trying to optimize the final connection so that when we get back, this link right here is facing the cylinder valve. So here's where some guys mix it up. We do not connect this one up. We don't connect up here as well. We keep this one snapped and we don't use it at all. This is the one that we want. Again, it's up on top. Easily accessed. You snap it in here, and you'll notice right where it finishes, right by the cylinder valve, right by the cylinder gauge. So, let's talk about the way this is configured. If I need the 25 foot, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come right by the strobe. I'm gonna pop the line, and I'm gonna hand this to my partner, and he's gonna extend it out. If I need to keep this bottle tethered to a firefighter. I want to remove the whole bottle, but I didn't want all this to come along. I'm gonna pop, and I'm gonna release, and now the 25 foot is independent. I can remove the whole bottle with the, with the face piece, the pre-attached high pressure line, and the quick fill transfill. If I just needed that quick fill, all I do is pop, disconnect, and now I have the short transfill, quick fill holes for close close lower out of air emergencies. Again, connect, connect, finish with the strobe, with this final one, make sure that this is covered right by the face piece. Now again, like I said, we have the option of putting the utility kits on the inside, stacking them on top. Let's give you an example. This would be the configuration. You can put your utility kits like so, one here, one here. That's where the adjustability, the height of the Velcro allows you a little bit more uh, movement of the bag to put more uh, equipment inside. You can also keep them on the outside. And we're just going to take a flap, try to start from the back, and we get it as compact as possible. And lift the Velcro down. Depending on what type of release you want, if you want a tougher release, you're going to actually cover the full length of the Velcro. If you want an easier release, or you got more equipment inside, you go. Half flat on the velcro. And as mentioned in Elm Grove and Tulsa, we don't have them set up this way, but on the, on the new Dragon bags, we'll have that option of velcro in the kits on the top if you want. I know some of our uh, our rigs are carrying the utility kits off the side just because some of the compartment height isn't allowing to put them on the inside. So you got your, your versatility and options.